You know what I mean? Welcome, Welcome to, to Ernest, Ernest Roulette. Roulette. My name is Kevin James. I am joined by my esteemed colleagues, Ryan Murphy and Neil Ciceriga. Together we are Guaranteed Video. Since August 2018, we have been watching Ernest P. Worrell films at random at the mercy of a roulette wheel. Today we congregate to order the films once and for all definitively. Yeah, I thought that a good way to open this would be we each say something we liked about Ernest, the films, the whole pantheon. We each bring up something we didn't like, and then we wrap it up by saying something that we s were surprised by. Well, something good. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to claim the uh, opening credits to Ernest Rides Again. I knew going in it was going to be one of the worst ones, uh, just from what I'd heard. But uh, very pleasantly surprised by the, uh, the intro song and stuff. I'd heard it before, but I had kind of forgotten. Uh, and it'll get stuck in your head for, for minutes. Uh, so that's what sticks out to me as a, as a positive moment in our journey. I would say one of my favorite positive experiences in the Ernest filmography was that it wasn't just a constant dissension towards crap. Mm -hmm. um, there were movies that got real bad, followed by decent movies. It happened twice, uh, where it wasn't just, oh, is this next one going to be worse than the last one? We were pleasantly surprised by uh, Slam Dunk, by School, by Army, and the rest were kind of exactly what we thought they would be. But that was a positive experience I had during Ernest Roulette. Mm -hmm. Something good for me is, if we had never done this project, I would have never watched Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Mm. Never heard of it, never saw a meme, never saw a reference. Dr. Otto is this weird little gem of a different time and a different place, and I, I love it. Something bad. Something okay, bad. yes, yeah. On to the bad now. Oh, there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to... Uh, something that kind of encompasses all the movies is the two assholes who aren't earnest. Mm -hmm. I think so much time ha was spent on these characters, you know, these duos who show up in almost all the movies, and it almost never worked. In fact, I think Army was the only time I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And again, that's grading on a curve, but uh, even, you know, in the heyday of Chuck and Bobby, yeah, they're funny looking, but they never have any great lines, in my opinion. Bad. Ernest goes to school's ending. Ernest Goes to School could have been a top four Ernest film, uh, but for my money, the ending really threw a lot of that goodwill out the window. Didn't completely sour the movie. I remember being disappointed in the last 10 minutes of that movie when Ernest just cheats to win a football game and it sort of erodes any message the film could have had. The message was, you should cheat. Cheat if you can. That's the message. Yeah. Or and, do drugs. Or yeah, that use, helps, use yeah. drugs to cheat. That was the message of the movie. You can cheat if you're smart. Obviously, thank you guys for letting me have this one. Ernest Goes to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Goes to Africa was bad because it was poorly shot, poorly paced, and un unforgivably racist. Yeah. Inarguably. You can try. <sighs> Jim Varney no. is a likable person, <laughs> and Ernest P. Worrell is a fun character. That movie was the lowest point of this list. Surprises. I was genuinely surprised by how good Slam Dunk Ernest was. Yep. Slam dunk, I went in, as we said before, with my seatbelt on, prepared for the worst, and it turned out to be really fun. Yep. Oh, I, my, my favorite surprise. Uh, in Ernest Goes to School, the cowboy scene, which I don't think we talked about enough, uh, but I loved it, and it's kind of out of nowhere for an Ernest movie, but it feels like something out of an episode of Pete and Pete. It's, just got, it's, totally. got, a, it's got a weird mysticism to it that I was not expecting in an Ernest movie. I know it's a bit of a cheat answer, but my favorite surprise is or the history of Jim Varney and John Cherry that we dove into, yeah. finding the oldest commercials from the pre-Ernest era, uh, and just learning about the uh, this weird little family of filmmakers from Tennessee uh, and Kentucky mm -hmm. that took the world by storm with this homegrown character. It was surprising how much of a story there was behind the scenes. Paper, rock, scissors. Oh, why use all this mathematical, analytical, I'm starting to say bullshit. I was surprised to realize pretty late in the show that almost every one of these movies was directed by John Cherry. Yep. I kind of always thought that they had they passed hands a lot, but uh, the only one that's not directed by him was still was still directed by like the producer of all the other movies. Cole so. Sam's. Yeah. Now I know what you're thinking at home, Kevin. You've ranked these movies every episode. Well, jackass, we're gonna do it again. We have a few rules this time. 
We're not gonna do mathematical averages. There'll be no point system. It's a deliberation. We have to come to a consensus. There will be no voting. We'll have to come to a consensus. There will be no ties. With that in mind, we must ask ourselves, what exactly are we ranking? Are we ranking these as the best films in order or the best earnest films? I assume it's the latter. For me, it's the best earnest film. Yeah. Best earnest film. And yeah, I think when it comes to, you know, tie breaking and stuff, then we do have to consider things like what is more entertaining on its own? What is the most representative of what you get out of an earnest film? And we'll just have to kind of wing it, right? 10 feature length films. Mm hmm. Now, before we start, I wanted to share a harrowing fact that I uh, figured out earlier. I was wondering, uh, well, you know, the, the average runtime of these movies is, you know, pretty standard 90 minutes. Uh, I wonder how much time we have spent watching earnest films. And this is a conservative, just adding up all the run times because we've watched some of them more than once for the, for the podcast. If you watched all of them back to back, including Dr. Otto, it is over 15 hours of earnest. Hmm. 900 something minutes. Cool. It's not so bad. Well, yeah, I guess you could do it in a day. Guys. Let's get started. This is the finale of Ernest Roulette. Number 10, I don't think we're going to have to argue that long on this. It's Ernest Goes to Africa. It's right? Africa? Africa's number 10. It's 10. Yeah. That's I, right. Ernest I was joking earlier, you know, we sh probably should have just attached 10 permanently to the Africa piece of paper there. Ladies and gentlemen, the 10th and worst Ernest film, Ernest Goes to Africa. 1997, poorly framed, poorly shot, probably a product of the shooting environment they were in. Racist, a little misogynist up front, and worst of all, not funny. Right. Not funny. Too the bad. Biggest sin of the movie, lack of humor. Number well, nine. okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> is number nine, I mean- I'll I think Rides Again is what we had before, right? I'm keeping the Rides Again. Okay, why is Rides Again worse than Army? I just think Army is funnier, right? Army is funnier. Army has more pacing. Army has dumb things that are payoffs, but they are payoffs. At no point during Army do I stop and pause and go, how much longer is this? Sure. Very true. And also, Rides Again was supposed to be a theatrical film. And uh, if it had been, I mean, well, our, it, technically it was. It was barely a theatrical film. But with that in mind, it's, it's a real disappointment, you know? It sounds like we're giving it a pass over Rides Again. I'm talking about Army here mm -hmm. because we had lower expectations. Because Rides Again does have the opening theme. It does. Which is a highlight of the series. It's like a top three thing for the whole franchise. And it does have apple maggots. Oh, no. Stopped by apple maggots again. <sighs> it's, it's got two pretty funny jokes in it. But is it. that better than the pancakes? What's what's the saving grace for Army? Like the soul with Ben, the Army, kid. Army just has better banter, better dialogue. It's got um bit of a victory lap feel to it. Yeah, exactly. And it uh, a lot of the ways it could have failed, it manages to avoid. If Rides Again had the same jokes about being electrocuted that Army has, I might even put Rides Again. But nope, it doesn't. And the electrocution jokes are one of the cornerstones of Ernest. And even with the self-aware stuff where Ernest says, I'd be dead if I wasn't just that close to being a cartoon, like that close to me, that doesn't make up for, like, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence, if, but you guys are both failing Army more than Rides Again? I think so. Yeah. Do, do you feel like if Rides Again had the budget of Army, it would have just been a disaster? I, I don't know what's going on with the budgets for these movies. I assume the budget for Army is way lower, right? It's gotta be. Yeah. And yet, it's a much better use of it. There's multiple cars in it. <laughs> uh, they actually get some pretty decent photography out of the desert. It's a better use of the two assholes that aren't Ernest. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, it feels that... like there's more actors in it somehow. <laughs> At the end of Ernest in the Army, we have the Peter O'Toole imagery, him doing the whole Lawrence of Arabia stuff, the Omar Sharif ending, the really pretty stuff. I did not end that movie thinking, I wish I'd got Ernest in Arabia. I did end Ernest Rides Again going, I would rather have seen a movie where they can't get the crown off his head and he plays like John Goodman and King Ralph. I should not end the movie going, I would have rather seen the movie where he's the King of England. That is hilarious. So Army goes right above Rides Again. Yep. I don't think it's a wide gulf. Well, I but, mean, uh, I mean, we're not we're not doing anything. Well, hang on, hang on. Do you think Army in school? That's the question here. You guys 
Oh, the school's like better school. than Army. School's better than Army. We're positive, right? A hundred. I, yeah. I think you guys are giving Army a little too much charity here. I, I don't think Rides Again is... Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Army and school occupy kind of a similar place. Yes. Army comes right after Africa. It has to be better. Yep. School comes after Rides Again. It has to be better. The thing to remember about Army and Africa is that they are both exceptionally shitty looking movies. They have poor frame rates, really low end uh, titles. Uh, the titles in Army are actually incongruent. Like the title of the movie changes because they didn't go back and redo the yeah. ending credits. Rides Again, while hard to look at, has some production value that pops up on occasion. It does yeah. have the padding with Mr. Bill and all that. I, I, I'll give you that. But man, like, you know, when Ernest is on the college campus and he's doing like the Australian voice and, and so forth, like, I, I do think Rides Again has some chutzpah to it, production quality wise. Compared to Army. Compared to Army. Army, you know, yeah, they're on the beach shooting. No, I think I think Army looks better. Yeah, I think Rides Again is very boring. It's all just in the woods and a suburb. There's kind of nothing to it. You got the cannon. It's the, very lukewarm. Whereas Army has some like, oh, that's really, yeah, that's good. Old school earnest stuff. Yeah, a little bit more old school. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think we're comfortable with putting it above Rides Again. Yes. Army goes above Rides Again. Ernest in the Army... From 1998, February 24th. Get it on there. Do we want to go to number seven? Or do we want to kind of jump up and just put the placeholder one and two for now? Just to get them out of the way. We, we should probably, yeah, we should probably do that. We should, do okay, let, okay, now while I put them up there, let's explain our tied for first as of right now. So ladies and gentlemen, in case this is the first time watching the show, you should go back to the beginning. What are you doing? Why are you starting here? They're trying to cut through the bullshit, I think, if they're just wow. watching this one. Well, the real patrons have been watching since the beginning, and we want to thank you again, patrons up on Patreon. So we got Jail and Scared Stupid up there. Tied for first. This is not, this is just so we can get it up on the board. Yeah, yeah. They're actually tied right now. We have had a lot of trouble determining which of these two is better. All three of us agree. One of these is the winner. Yes. Should we come back to that once? We will we, come back okay. to it. We will come back to it. Is it easier to determine number three or number seven at this point? What are you thinking for, for number three? Christmas and camp. It's got to be one of those, right? Christmas, camp, maybe auto. Maybe auto? I mean, I would put auto at three. Yeah. But I mean, I understand why we wouldn't. I've been the biggest champion of Christmas. Yes. Okay, make your case. Why Christmas? Having rewatched it over Christmas to do the commentary track with you guys, I actually do think I see your point. It is too dry. What I like about those first two, like, proper earnest movies is that Ernest feels like a big brother type character. Um, and he never quite gets that back. He instead becomes like the town weirdo or just a loser adult in the other movies. There's a certain warmth to these two movies that I, I think it puts them in their own kind of sphere. Yeah. I think you're probably gonna have a more fun time watching Ernest Goes to Camp. Than Christmas? I think so. Hmm. Now that I, yeah, now that it I've... is more of an appropriate earnest vehicle. It has the same strength that Scared Stupid has. Mm -hmm. Scared Stupid's strength of it being a proper earnest fable. Like, okay, here's like the town idiot, and he's gonna redeem himself, and only the kids listen to him. Yep, it's a good story. Like, and that's kind of what Camp does as well. It doesn't feel like a retread of Camp. Right. But that's sort of what those two movies have over some of the other ones. Yeah, in Christmas he really is pretty ancillary. He's uh, you know, he's helping out and he only really gets to do anything truly outrageous at the very end. He might be at his most charming. Yeah. Actually charming and Ernest Saves Christmas. You know, hanging out canceling some lights on this puppy and If you think Jim Varney is kinda dreamy and and whatnot, then uh, I think Christmas is probably, he's hes like the most respectable in that movie, right? Yeah, he's got the snake guy going on. You never feel sorry for him at any point in Christmas, right? Well, when he screws up Christmas towards the end for a fleeting 20 seconds. Sure, yeah. <laughs> when he's like, oh, I guess I'm the main character of this movie for a moment. like. But so he's got, I don't know, he's just, he kind of has the most like earned confidence in that movie. He, he really is just like trying to help people and it's never about what a screw up he is, which I like. It's just a little bit different from Camp, the other movies. Camp's big one up on Christmas is that it's a more appropriate feature film vehicle for Ernest, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The script is tailored to the strengths of Varney and the character they had created. Right? I mean, I laugh at Camp, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a definite reason why it was the first one that they made outside of Dr. Otto. But there's nothing in Camp as funny as the snake guy in Christmas. But I think that movie gets away with being a little less funny. Because, it's okay that it's less funny. Yeah, I think I think because it is sort of a wish fulfillment movie, 
You wish you could be in a you know crazy gang on a on a in a summer camp, pulling one over on the bad guys and singing songs and yeah, the campfire tales. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ernest goes to camp or Ernest saves Christmas? Camp, because I think Ernest saves Christmas kind of sucks. And here's <laughs> really? Why. Number one, without those opening credits, the film does not feel expensive. Those yeah. opening credits create the false sense of security that this movie is going to be really good. Mm-hmm. It's not. And the credits are even. Sp- Probably sponsored by Coca Cola. They definitely are. They, yeah. yeah. At the end of the end credits, they state these intellectual properties are owned by the Coca Cola Corporation. Blah 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 blah. I don't care about the Captain Kangaroo person. That's going to be the next Whoa. Tim Allen Santa Claus. Yeah. I don't care about him. Man, Joe. What, but what about, sure. What about Santa in jail? Getting everyone to sing. Santa in jail is funny. There Santa are, in jail works. But are you saying you'd go camp Christmas or like camp auto Christmas? I'd go camp auto Christmas. Okay. And here's why. Because it's Doctor Otto is a tough movie to defend. <laughs> this is if well we were said. Doing All right, a popular vote. It's going to be really hard to get people to pick Doctor Otto over Ernest Saves Christmas. Yeah, Doctor Otto is so weird to fit into this list because it is nothing like the other movies. It is apples and oranges. And th- yes. the important thing to remember here is that this is our list. This mm-hmm. is the guaranteed video top ten Ernest films list. Mm-hmm. So hold that thought on Doctor Otto. Are we agreeing? You almost seem to be agreeing it begrudgingly, but you said it out of the side of your mouth, like, yeah, Ernest no, I, I, goes to I, camp. I've, I've come around on putting camp above Christmas. Yeah. And I think three is a good spot for it. And I think you, you we, we all agree, right? There's like two really sad scenes in this movie. The song. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, and Ernest saving the day at the end when he goes, that's it, it's over. Like, that's... And the, uh, the bullshit, like, Indian mysticism uh, still gives the movie... Gravitas and <laughs> makes the ending feel extremely triumphant for Ernest. Okay, so when camp- he dodges bullets without moving. So, so our tentative list so far is jail, scared, stupid camp. These are just thrown up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go back down to the bottom, or should we question? Let's keep going because I think the Doctor Otto question is kind of on our minds, right? Doctor Otto is going to be tough to fit into this list, but it's in there. It's- here's here's an argument in favor of putting Doctor Otto in number four. Okay. Some people might actually use this list. Yeah. Very few people have seen Dr. Otto. A lot of people have seen Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we should just encourage people to check out Dr. Otto because it's weird and it's underseen. Yeah. I think the reason we're holding on to Christmas in such high esteem Mm -hmm. is that it has some of the funniest shit that ever happened in an Ernest movie. Oh, yeah. Right? It really does. It's probably the best Vern scene of all all the intellectual properties. It's like like 100 Ernest commercials squeezed into one minute. Right. Mm-hmm. There's also I keep bringing up the snake guy. You can't discount the snake guy, um, or when Ernest is explaining how Santa oozes through the vent covers. covers. Mm-hmm. Right. There's there's good bits in that movie that could be boiled down into a 45 minute TV special, and Santa's good in it. Yep. Santa himself is good. There's he some... is, and I think the Christmas stuff in the movie, when I saw it as a kid, actually did help define like, oh, this is what Christmas magic in a movie should feel like. Yeah. So I, I I have personal proof that it does work as a children's kids movie. Yes. I don't know if you necessarily agree. Do you remember seeing the, seeing it as a as a kid? Yes. And do you remember liking it as a kid or no? Uh-huh. Well, so, and I do think that the charm of Varney in that movie, and I've brought it up twice now, is a little more realistic. Like when Santa Claus says, "My name is Santa Claus," mm-hmm. and Ernest goes, "Well, how about that?" Yeah. That's a little more realistic, charming Southern handyman. Exactly. In any other movie, he'd 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 uh, look at I don't know what what he'd do. <laughs> I feel like Christmas and Otto are a dead heat for me. Uh-huh. But the the thing that pushes Otto over, and I think it's it's main charm. Yes, the, it it is it is uh, not always the most interesting looking movie, but when it is interesting looking, it's akin to when you first saw a crazy independent or student film. Yep. You forget like this is what it looks like when you know the edges haven't been sanded off. Like this is the well all this all these movies are pulled from in mm-hmm. a way. I love the lightning effects. I love the miniatures. I love the costumes. I love the dumb robot. <laughs> in my mind's eye, I'm not thinking about Lance Sterling wasting my time walking through the back somebody's backyard or the park down the street or just the woods. I'm thinking about <laughs> these crazy trauma like oingo boingo nonsense things, and the fact that uh, Jim Varney is really, really entertaining. Mm-hmm. And Ernest does make his first feature film appearance. Yep, sure. So, so I, I, we, yeah. we auto more than Christmas. I think Dr. Otto, with the uh, with the caveat that you might want to watch Dr. Otto once 
Whereas Christmas, you might want to return to it every few years, watch it with friends who haven't seen it since they were kids. I love Dr. Otto, and if I agree. If putting it up there gets anyone new to watch it, cool. So are we just going to throw Christmas up right now, or is there a debate for school or Slam Dunk being better than Christmas? You know, I like school, and I was pleasantly surprised by Slam Dunk. I can't see them beating Christmas. Christmas, five. I put Christmas at five. Now this is good, because six and seven between school and Slam Dunk... These are both solid projects, Mm -hmm. both of which I I had not seen as a kid, and I was pleasantly surprised. I would put Slam Dunk before school. Number one, Slam Dunk could have been really, really racist, and it wasn't. Yes. The people who brought you Ernest Goes to Africa managed to make a movie that that doesn't go there. Uh, It goes there a little bit, uh, not going to lie. but There are a few lines that we missed in our episode about it where Ernest is referred to as the hardest working cracker in basketball. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I'll say this about school. Mm Mm-hmm. When we look back on Slam Dunk, we're talking about its best merits, right? Yeah. And how like the, 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 the morality play with the kid is cool. It is a little dry. It is a little kind of vacant. There aren't a lot of great jokes in that movie. Yeah. And like the big gags are kind of eh, wonky. Right. Like some of the best jokes, like like the like the weird, like fast forwarding, speed ramping stuff. School, despite the ending, it's pretty much like a live action version of Doug, the Nickelodeon show. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. like Ernest going into a locker, like Ernest like yeah. going, I have to go back to school. It's probably the most Nickelodeon of the Ernest movies. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It feels far more like a product of the 90s, a bit of Nickelodeon, a little Doug, a little Simpsons, plus the fact that the Flowers for Algernon type story of Ernest is pathologically <laughs> stupid. We're going to make him smart. He'll have hubris and then learn something. Now, unfortunately, the lesson is you should cheat. That's just, the big problem nice. with that movie. Yeah. The ending of that movie, um, everything after he studies. If we could put aside the football ending, I know it's hard to do. A bad ending can really soil a whole movie. And Slam Dunk has a great ending. It re- it's a the what it should happen is don't cheat. But now imagine you're nine years old. Mm. I have to say, school looks better because some of it's filmed in the daylight. Yeah, a lot of it's in the daylight. Some of it's outdoors. Well, bigger crane shots, bigger budget. You, well, usually I think the nighttime stuff helps Slam Dunk because it gives it more contrast and there's like funner, more flavorful flavorful lighting but a lot of it is indoors yeah right whereas the outdoor stuff when they're playing football and like the, the marching band stuff and let's not forget that awesome trick shot in the opening credits where oh, yeah. that one cut jim goes under the mat and everything uh-huh. yeah there's a few shots in school that are deceptively simple you know they do stuff with lighting and you know tracking shots that uh that you, you might not pick up on because you're just thinking like eh, it's just some shitty made made for a tv movie or a direct-to-video movie uh, but if you actually look at it, they are getting a little creative with the space that they have, and I think there's a little more visual variety to that movie. It does it does go a little far in the Ernest is annoying direction. Yeah, that's the thing. Slam Dunk Ernest has the most in jokes and in references. It's a film made for fans. Yes, Trantor's Who did not exist yet, but they do now. They do now. Yes. Yeah, in 2019. Yeah, <laughs> he's the baby. He's the boy. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is funny. He is a light. He is he's good. doing. He's pulling his weight in this movie. Moloch is a great villain. Moloch is it's awesome. It's a more gentle comedy than School. I, are we leaning School over Slam Dunk? I'm leaning Slam Dunk over I'm School. I'm leaning Slam Dunk too. Fuck, really? Poor <laughs> School. So I'm going to put it up here for right now just so we can look at this. Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced Slam Dunk is better than School. And I love Slam Dunk. Well, you- look at how perfectly it all fits. <laughs> <laughs> Slam Dunk I don't know if the actual act of watching it again would be as entertaining as school. I think watching school and seeing Ernest get lit on fire and having a fire extinguisher thrown at his head. (laughs) I'm surprised to hear that the charm of the story and the message in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and like the absurdity of it being a Christian film Mm -hmm. is winning out over... The density of school, because school's got the goods. It's got like the wide angle, like the da, 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 when he's in the helmet, like in, when he's in the Dr. Otto mode and he's getting. Yeah. I mean, school is definitely a more vibrant, colorful movie and more going on. There's more going on. The plumbing scene at the beginning. 
I don't like that the bullies get to like beat the hell out of him in school, and then nothing ever really happens. The to Terminator them. scene, though, when he, when he when he when he when catches, he catches, the, catches the football, the like thunk, and he throws it back at them. You know, that's true. He does finally get his own. I yeah. am coming around because I I I keep thinking about the movie and remembering more gags that I enjoyed, like the like him uh, getting his head stuck in the tuba and the whole <laughs> he puts marching it back in. Well, no, the whole marching band like imitating him and stuff <laughs> is like a pretty great gag. Yeah. And, whereas Slam Dunk is like, I can remember the whole movie at once in my head because it's a lot more straightforward. There's less deviation from just progressing the plot forward. Characters are pretty good in Slam Dunk too. Uh, TJ, yeah, characters Will. are good. The shoes are kind of funny and it just feels less icky like I'm watching, you know, you know what I mean? School feels a little sad because you can just see the movie that they wanted to make. You can see what they wanted it to look like. Yeah. It's supposed to be a theatrical release. It looks like it's going for something else. Whereas Slam Dunk, I think, looks the way they want it to look. Mm-hmm. Some people have pointed out you can see like cardboard people in the stands in the oh, basketball really? scenes. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I also think the very opening of Slam Dunk, Ernest, is really bad. Ah, uh, yeah. You mean the 1960s flashback to him he's as a baby? He's child? the boy. Yeah. Funny in joke. It's. I mean, it's it's close. I don't. I don't strongly feel that Slam Dunk is better than School. Do you? It's it's so cl- it's close. They have their merits, but I think we've made the right call here. You really think Slam Dunk's better than School? I could go either way. What's the thing that pushes Slam Dunk over the edge? What's the is it is it, is it the father son stuff? For me, it's the fact that they're they're in universe earnest. Yeah, that there's so much attention paid to the fan service. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, when I say that out loud, of like, oh, fan service is a bad thing. Not necessarily. Hmm. It means they're looking at who's actually paying attention, who actually. Has got dove in headfirst to the John Cherry Jim Varney universe of like those jokes. Trantor Dairy are for us. Sure, sure but that barely feels like it adds. There are, anything there are to the a few movie. signs. There are there there are a few signs they made five minutes before filming. Like we did this, right? They, right. Is there other stuff though? Because like I, I feel like the camp nod in Army is almost stronger than that. It's that an it's, actual it's, line. Yeah, <laughs> it's like summer camp for real men. Well, I was a summer camp counselor once. Fuck it, I put school above Slam Dunk, too. I'm gonna do this. Careful, careful. Ryan, here's why I think school is better. All right. Or why I've come to believe that school should go up on the list. I think it's a little closer in tone to Dr. Otto. It feels a little bit more like a cartoon, like we talked about. There's just more going on. The plot has a moral failing, but it matters less in this movie. So you can kind of excuse it. You know, maybe the <laughs> the visual quality feels a little cheaper, but it is, there is more production going on. There's a lot more actors. There's a lot more going on in Br- every scene. Bruce Arnson, the music director of the preceding movies, mm-hmm. he did most of the earnest movies, the, the, the good ones. Yeah. He's in it as the announcer at the football game at the end, which is kind oh, yeah. of fun, right? Like, you know, he's in like that weird, like, I'm just listing things about that movie I like now. Come on, Ryan, we just want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> School feels more like a cartoon where I think Ernest belongs. Yeah. School and Slam Dunk are both about a story about Ernest where I, th- I don't like it when he's a secondary or tertiary character. Yeah. Or like where the movie, as with more than one of these, where the movie could happen even if Ernest weren't in it, which is yeah. a problem. These are movies about Ernest. Mm-hmm. Supporting characters are good. Yeah, I'll say School is filmed better. School is fun. The scientists in School are hilarious. For once, the supporting characters actually help the plot. They're not just moving their eyeballs left and right really quickly because apparently that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> we do it's get this is the funny. this is the final uh, Bobby appearance. He came back. He came back, and uh, he's, he he gets to have brains this time. Which and is blink. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> he gets to blink. He finally All right. blinks. I'll put school at seven for Bobby. Six. For Bobby. For Bobby. As you talked, I was starting to think maybe slam dunk again. Here's the thing about this list. I can't believe I'm saying this, but everything above Rides Again is worth watching. Maybe not Army. Depends. Save Army for last after you've wrung like the enjoyment out of the all, all the others. Perhaps watch them in order. Perhaps, in <laughs> fact, yes, or reverse order. Yeah. <laughs> so they get better. All right. So now it's time to this talk is about the big these question. two, right? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for those who may be less familiar with the process, we are tied for what are definitely the two fan favorites: Ernest goes to jail and Ernest scared stupid. If you were to ask me back in August what our ranking would be, I was going to assume that Camp and Christmas would be at the top because mm-hmm. I think those are the best reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think so. But for the three of us, 
Jail is actually the funniest movie. I think that's a fair assessment. Between these two, Jail is funnier. Not better. Mm -hmm. But you you are more of a scared, stupid man, right, Neil? I think so. I think Jail certainly tries real hard. And it, it's, it, it feels the most Sam Raimi out of all of them, I guess. It's, yeah. it's the most garish. The camera moves a lot. Yeah, there's a weird cartoon feel to it. And it's definitely a movie that exists somewhere deep in my heart because I can remember Ernest getting electrocuted and it being kind of scary. When Ernest, at the beginning, is in the bank and he sits up and he's like holding the back of his head and he goes, huh? When everything starts to hover at him. Mm -hmm. You realize that the rest of this movie, this poor man is now stuck in a cartoon and maybe he didn't want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. find that very funny. And I also want to commend Ernest Goes to Jail for not feeling the need to be 90 minutes long. Oh, no. Which is a sin for quite a few of these movies. 81 yeah. minutes. It's like Army of Darkness. It's just in and out and it's over. Yeah. The that title promises one thing and it delivers. <laughs> it's got the best villain. Yeah, Nash is great. It's almost a cop out like, well, who, who could be the best villain? Well, I guess Jim Varney again. <laughs> you know? And does he just like embodies this criticism of the whole franchise of Ernest. Yeah. There's a very Frank Grimes quality exactly. to him. Now, Ernest Scared Stupid. Why does everyone love Ernest Scared Stupid? I love Ernest Scared Stupid. It's uh, being facetious. Why? I mean, but, 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 someone tell me, though. Why does everyone love Ernest Scared Stupid? Because on top of being one of the best Ernest movies, it's also a really good 90s kids Halloween movie. Yeah. Like, regardless of whether Ernest is in it, it's not quite Hocus Pocus. It's not quite Hocus Pocus, but it's one of those movies you rent it and you'll always remember it because the monsters are so effective. The dynamic of the town is, you know... Believable. Believable. The people, the adults are just sick of Ernest being around. Yeah, the way nighttime is shot and it feels very, you know, cinematic for kids. Sure. As an Ernest movie, although it's not, a, it's not the funniest, it's not the most heartfelt, it's not the saddest, it's not the most of anything, but I think it... Uh, you know, RPG stat style is high. It's leveled up in all of those fields enough that it cumulatively. It's a good average. It's a good average. It's got it's got good lighting, good music. It's got great music. At Actually, time. yeah. What about you, Ryan? What makes you love Ernest Scared Stupid? Two things, because it is a creature feature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the killer clowns from outer space are hokey looking at the end. When they're in a crowd setting and we need a lot of trolls, some of them start to show their weaknesses. They don't all look as good as Trantor, and Trantor looks great. Trantor does he, look great. He has great expressions. There's a scene where the little girl rolls over in his bed and he's genuinely frightening looking. Like from an R-rated movie, not, not a earnest going ooh to boogers it's like an actually frightening looking shot hats off to trantor hats off to trantor it is a slasher movie for children mm -hmm. yeah and eartha kit oh, oh my god yeah yeah it's we, number one right i don't know man i'll say this about scared stupid it is well-rounded mm -hmm. jail is the most legitimately funny movie in the franchise to counter eartha kit mm -hmm. the lighting in Ernest goes to jail is second to none for children's entertainment. I've got to say, it was really interesting studying this film as an adult and seeing that the interior of the prison was stark and frightening with Nash in it, and the environment changed when Ernest got there. Yeah. It became these people with these bizarre pink uniforms with shoulders and like clocks on their hats and the pink light. Like the universe changed around Ernest almost as though Ernest is not a reliable narrator. And he's nuts. <laughs> yeah, this is the jail in his mind. The prison in which Nash and his goons put the bar down on a man's neck of you owe me money <laughs> is so, so far removed from Auntie Nelda trying to get through the by, by shaming a guard. <laughs> We've gone from like you will get murdered in prison to... Bugs Bunny trying to tunnel underneath, which, the, again, is, is the cover art, but never actually in the film. But it does feel a little more directed and a little less crowd-pleasing, where Scared Stupid's crowd-pleasing elements do hurt it. You know? Like, yeah. Some of the things that, I, I will not discount Eartha Kitt. I will not discount the music. I will not discount Miak. <laughs> Everyone loves the Miak joke. But, dude, Ernest in the pen, man. The I, pen, have to say, I think the, the restaurant is funnier than the pen. Oh, when he throws the fork because he's yeah, still yeah, magnetized? No, like, he's doing some of his best physical humor in, in jail. There's not a ton of that in Scared Stupid. Scared Stupid is a little more gag-based, prop-based. 
you know, him in the in the uh, in the, the truck bear trap. getting crushed, the bear trap. Yeah, they both have rim shot. Yeah, they do. When I think about jail and I think about what's funny, like Auntie Nelda is funny. Him with electrical powers is funny. What's not funny? Chuck and Bobby like dancing to like samba music. Yeah, it's when it's not. It does nothing for me. They're in it a lot. They're in it. Yes, they're in a lot. There's, when I go to yeah. scared stupid, I look at its strengths and weaknesses. Eartha Kitt strength, Trantor strength, Ernest having the being the one believed by children but not by adults, but being you know uh, vindicated in the end. The biggest problem I have with scared stupid, yes, the children are not only unlikable, they are the laugh track. They laugh at Ernest. And they teach the audience, the child audience, this is when you laugh. I don't like that. There's stuff, there's a good amount of that in Ernest Scared Stupid. And now we're going to start saying some mean things about a beloved Ernest movie. I don't think Ernest kissing Trantor is funny. As a kid, it was kind of funny. I remember, I I mean, the dancing was funnier. Sure. The kiss is more the cherry on on the top. The thing we like about the Trantor Uh, kiss scene is, kill him! Barney really heroing it up, like looking down at the milk and flexing, like that stuff works, right? I mean, I I watched both as a kid, and I remember feeling the ending of Scared Stupid was so much more higher stakes than like the bomb and like all the anti gravity stuff in jail. Like I remember <laughs> thinking even a kid, as a kid, like this is kind of ridiculous. Whereas fighting Trantor really feels like the end of the line. Like this guy's gonna kill everyone unless you do something. Sure, sure. Counterpoint. Uh huh. Evil Ernest <laughs> bouncing good Ernest up and down. Good Ernest flying the bomb out of the bank, cut to the cops, and the warden goes, He's getting away. <laughs> He's getting away. Um, what about when uh, Evil Ernest, in the, the build up to the finale, explains to Chuck that he's gonna rob the bank? I'm going to rob the bank. <laughs> the bank that you are paid to protect. I'm gonna take the money out of the safe. <laughs> I'm going to rob the bank. He's tired of being in this movie. He's, he's like literally wiring the bomb and Chuck's just like, hey, what are you doing? Or, like, I, I I don't know. I, I feel like that joke was ahead of its time. I feel mm-hmm. like there's some stuff that's ahead of its time. Uh, what about Spider in the arm wrestling scene in jail? What about the soap gun? When Ernest builds the gun out of soap, he whittles it and it's impossibly big. It's funny, man. Yeah, it's funny. actually funny. You agree, so you agree? Jail is leagues is a league funnier, I should say. It's it's tough because when it when it works, it is funnier. It's totally funnier. It's also attempting a lot more jokes, I think, and not all not all of them work for me. I think some of them are just kind of too annoying. He's treated like he's stupider. The love interest clearly finds him to be a complete idiot, <laughs> and not in a funny way like Eartha Kit. <laughs> yeah, that it's world. A, it's a little sad. Okay. Um. Whereas in Scared Stupid, he's just kind of comfortable with his lot in life. And that works a little bit better for him. He's less of a pathetic guy in that movie and more of a guy that everyone knows in town and everyone's fine with he's, until, you know, kids start disappearing. I would I would argue that the batting average of actually laughing to a joke in jail is higher, though. Even though jail goes up to bat more, that doesn't mean it doesn't connect to the ball. That's yeah. not, not to say Scared Stupid is like fails more. I laugh more per minute with jail than I did Scared Stupid. Like I'm trying to think of like the big laughs in Scared Stupid. Like uh The Great Redneck Hope. The Great Redneck Hope. Hallelujah. And then immediately cutting to This is not a thrill! An actual trial of dead sided in the bride. What I love about Scared Stupid, or what I like about Scared Stupid, is that even when it's not telling a joke, or when its jokes aren't landing with us as a, as jaded adults, the story's moving. The story is a better adventure story. It's a little more fun to just be along for the ride with Scared Stupid. In jail, when it's not making you laugh, it's just a bunch of grown men going like, "Jail, no!" You know, like it's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm in jail. When it's not being funny, it's just annoying. Whereas Scared Stupid, when it's not being funny, it's still kind of a fun kids adventure. Yeah, and you mentioned the RPG average and everything. Yeah, I what, think. But yeah. what's more important, like an earnest movie that has an entertaining, colorful story mm-hmm. that actually succeeds at making us laugh, right? Or 
a Halloween, you know, kids comedy movie that is not as good as say Hocus Pocus. I, I, I think, I think we could all agree. Right. We, well, yeah. <laughs> if we had Hocus Pocus on the list, would it just be at the top? <laughs> Probably. Ryan, where are you falling on this? Are you feeling scared <clears throat> stupid I'm, now? I'm glad we've discussed both. I would still put jail above scared stupid. Yeah. We have to make a decision at some point. And scared stupid has gotten better in my mind's eye. I wasn't as big a fan of it when I was growing up. Looking at all these, spending months going over this, scared stupid is really solid. Yes. It, it, it deserves to be number two, but somebody's got to be number one. And for me, jail is the most cohesive, solid beginning, middle end for what Jim Varney does, for what his strengths are. Is it fair to observe that some of our enjoyment has been derived from ironic laughter with these movies? It's is hard it, to tell. Is it fair to accept that, that we are kind of laughing at these movies and not with them on occasion? Less than I, than I thought we would. Sure, sure. I assume there's very little ironic laughter with Ernest Scared Stupid. You mean, by ironic, you mean it's funny to you in a way that was not intended by the It's filmmakers? so bad it's good. Not so much for me. I think the things that are supposed to be funny in jail are funny. They're so, actually pretty funny. I, yeah. I, I, really, I really agree. Even someone like Nash being a jerk. Nash like getting whacked in the back of the head and giving them a look, giving Bobby a look like I will this and then another whack and another like each time it escalates of like at some point I, the criminal, I'm going to hit back like the even Nash just looking at his preposterous Rube Goldberg Pee Wee Herman home of who is this man? This is pathetic. This guy's better off in jail. It's funny and it's yeah. supposed to be funny for. Like an eight to twelve, eight to ten year old boy. Yeah, I think there's a few elements in jail that don't belong in a kids movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like his, Nash creeping on a woman. Yeah, you know, cornering her and stuff. It's pretty brief. In the it's dog does it is save brief, her, and it's almost the sort of thing you wouldn't know to realize as, as a kid. Nash needs to be a threat though, and I do he appreciate does, that he is a real threat. And it, I don't think it goes. I could see someone saying it goes too far. For mm -hmm. me, it doesn't go too far. Um, I, I, I do appreciate the fact that kids go, oh, someone needs to stop this guy. He's not just like the Hamburglar. <laughs> he's a bad guy. Yeah. Everything in the courtroom scene with him is good too. When he's like flipping the coin because he's like threatened the jury. He's intimidated the jury. There's some good, there's some decent plotting there. The plot keeps moving along. I like Lyle a lot. You know? Yeah. The cast of jail is pretty good. What's the biggest weakness of Scared Stupid? Other the than kids. the kids. Oh. Okay. Other than the kids. <laughs> yeah, other, that was quick. The, the car chase is great. The music's pretty good. I don't think Ernest's opening is all that great, where he's on the uh, the garbage truck and yeah, the yeah. kids are doing the John Wayne jokes. But I do love, shut up, Whirl. Yes, with the aid of the most advanced troll fighting equipment known to modern technology. Shut up, Whirl. They're pretty different movies. Scared Stupid feels like it, there is a real universe that it's taking place in, whereas Jail feels thin. Like, you know, it feels like if you look out the window, there's just nothing there, you know? I think the the opening scene of Jail is really good, almost as its own short film. Yeah, it feels like a cartoon before the movie that happens after. <laughs> like it's selling soap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know we dump and Chuck and Bobby a lot. Chuck and Bobby, I do think, are kind of funny in Jail. It's probably their them at their best in Jail. When right? Ernest gets selected for jury duty and he goes over to visit Chuck and Bobby next door, and he walks in and they're just doing target practice at the front of the house inside the house mm -hmm. and Ernest is standing in the line of fire going, Hey guys, I got into Jerry dude. And they're still <laughs> shooting. I mean, yeah, there is, there's a little bit too much of them in jail, but Bobby holding a gun is funnier than anything they do in scared stupid. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm the outlier here and I can see why you guys like jail so much. But you are making a good case for the well-rounded nature, Eartha Kit. Yeah. Eartha Kit and Trantor are as strong an element in a movie as Ernest. Jail feels like to me they're squeezing everything else, everything out of Varney into a bucket. Like this is everything you yeah. could get. And that really works on us because we love Jim Varney. We love Ernest movies. We don't need to be sold on it. Yeah. I think watching Jail would backfire on someone who is on the fence about Ernest. But do we care? Because it's the guaranteed video top 10 Ernest movies. That's yeah, true. This, this list is not to convince anyone to like Ernest. Yeah. If you don't like Ernest, this is not going to sell it to you. I, I wait, get that. That is, is, a market, that wait, is, a market is there any favor. point to this list? 
What is the best Ernest movie? Is it Ernest Scared Stupid or Ernest Goes to Jail? I think it's Ernest Scared Stupid because it succeeds in a way that all, multiple other movies attempt to succeed. Whereas Jail is a Bugs Bunny cartoon, it's a little bit different. It succeeds on its own merits, but it doesn't prove anything about any of the other Ernest movies. Well, it doesn't prove the formula. The, the, the multiple personalities thing, right? In mm -hmm. Scared Stupid, that's like the most earnesty humor in the movie, right? Yep. It's, and I, I, I don't think any of us have ever made sense of it. No. What's happening? It's the, it's the most slickly edited version of that joke. Yeah. You know, the music carries okay. it through, yeah. you know, it, it, it's well filmed, the costumes are fully realized, and it moves fast when it does happen. Whereas in jail, they kind of do the same thing at one point, but it's just him looking in a mirror doing some voices, and it's, it feels undercooked, and they're not any funnier. It's him doing a John Wayne, him doing an old man voice, and then nothing comes of it. That, I thought that was kind of funny, because that's the scene where Lyle realizes he kind of likes Ernest. Yeah, yeah, it's cute, but it's not, and it's... it's He's got to learn to be tough. He's doing the voices to get for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's plot driven. He's trying to get Nash's voice down. Okay, Lyle. This guy, Nash, he's a tough guy, right? He's a gangster. Okay, how about this? You dirty rat. You're the guy that shot my brother, and I'm the guy that's going to shoot you. As opposed to, I'm, ah, I'm an Ottoman because, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try one last thing. Okay. Neil, mm -hmm. we're going to watch an earnest movie tonight. What do you want to watch? Like, ask me again in, like, five years, because I can't watch any more Ernest movies. <laughs> I know, I know, it's been months. <laughs> J for me, it's jail. Yeah, that's... I mean. do. I, I still vote Scared Stupid. I think it's more of a perennial classic. I think it's just... Even if you didn't see it as a kid, you'll, you will probably feel a little nostalgic watching it, because so many other 90s movies tried to capture the same feeling. I do think it's hard, considering our tastes, mm -hmm. to not love Scared Stupid. Oh, a yeah. horror comedy for kids that feels a little adult for a PG movie, or whatever. I think it was PG, mm -hmm. right? I don't yeah. think it was G. I can't think of a comedy film like Jail. I think movies like The Addams Family owe a little bit to Jail. Jim Carrey movies like The Mask. For sure. Oh, yeah. What was I going to say? Like some... Uh... <laughs> Mr. Bean Comes to America, that kind of... No, that's a much drier film. And, and, with any, and with any film franchise, you can see the horror genre movie being a placeholder thing. You got to make the horror film. Mm -hmm. You got to make the Christmas film. Mm -hmm. No one makes the Jailbreak movie. That's, that's another thing I like about it. It feels more original to me. It, yeah. it feels a little more... And that's why I keep it, vouching you know, it for it. It might have some old Hollywood analog that we're not thinking of. Maybe Laurel and Hardy went to jail at some point. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, you cited... You know, I think about Bugs Bunny. I mean, the cover art was literally him like digging rabbit hole type props of him looking up at a guard and like doing his dumb grin like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. like he does. He actually gets away with, with the Aunt Nelda yeah. scene. Uh, <laughs> is it being a Looney Tunes cartoon a strength or a weakness? For me, it's a strength. Yeah. Well, he spends most of the movie just trying to get himself out of prison, not saving anyone's life. The story in jail is shit. I'll yes. admit that. <laughs> Humor in Scared Stupid isn't great. The story in jail isn't great. Here's my weak point, my point of attack. If you guys want to win, win me over on jail. Okay. You're right. There's kind of no other movie like it. It has a certain feeling to it. It could only be made in 89, 90, 91. Yes. It's not like any other Ernest movies. It's more of a weird pocket universe. It's what a lot of the other movies wish they were. Yeah, but I mean, there's only one other like human being in that movie, and it's the love <laughs> interest. Everyone else is like just a, a weird shambling ape <laughs> of a person, you know? It's a weird movie. It's really unique. I think if none of the other movies existed, and there was just a random movie from 1990 called Ernest Goes to Jail, who the fuck is Ernest? <laughs> Why is this movie like this? If that, when I think about it that way, I can kind of see how it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got that, it's got that dark magic to it, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think it does. It's a cult movie that's undercut by being one in ten, you know? It was them at the height of their powers, the mm -hmm. earnest brain trust, oh, yeah. the earnest team, and they weren't compromised. They made jail. I, I don't mean to make this into a war of attrition. I, I could be convinced Scared Stupid is the number one because it is a more well-rounded movie. I, and I recognize that, but, but I'm not. You seem pretty firm on it. I, when I think about the strengths and weaknesses of both movies, yes, Jail has weaknesses. Chuck and Bobby dancing is weak. Uh, a lot of the other characters are not nearly as. Yes, there is something to be said for a lot of these people 
become ridiculous other than the one 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 and only woman in the entire film mm -hmm. uh this universe is crazy and Ernest, the crazy is like a storm, and Ernest is the eye of the storm, <laughs> and the crazy, the storm of crazy goes wherever he goes. And in Scared Stupid, the universe is founded in reality. An insane supernatural thing happens, and only Ernest is on par with it. Jim Varney's line of Ernest's come from a, a place of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're both strong, but for me... The most solid cohesive is Jail. Jail is funnier. Jail is Ernest at his peak. I prefer Ernest in a cartoon world than the real world. I think that Jail is closer to a piece of art than Scared Stupid. Scared Stupid has artistic merit. Mm -hmm. The lighting is great. The effects are pretty cool. Trantor. Taking everything into account. Yes. Assuming that you at home are an adult. <laughs> And that you have a sense of humor, because why would you be watching this if you took yourself really seriously? Yeah, watch Jail. Jail is a lot of fun. It's really colorful, uh, unique, and bizarre. And Scared Stupid is a little bit more safe. That's something you could watch with your kids if you have kids. You know, they both have their weaknesses, but Jail kind of doesn't give a fuck about its weaknesses. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Put, put Scared Stupid in number two. You're you know, sure? I, yeah. I feel good about this, that. This is not just you conceding, like you see. It, it. is, but it, it's it's not <laughs> that hard of a concession. I just, I just, I think you're a, a you just hit the nail on the head. It is funnier. Jail is funnier than Scared Stupid. Scared Stupid will, of course, always have a place in my heart. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Scared Stupid made concessions that Jail didn't. Scared Stupid as the kids to widen the audience, and that means it applies to a wider audience. Kids. Scared Stupid has a bit of teeth that a lot of kids Halloween movies don't mm -hmm. probably not as good as we keep bringing it up Hocus, Hocus Pocus, Pocus. Mm -hmm. came out years before Hocus Pocus too also made by Disney but it does have enough of that like backyard creative type feel that Ernest has at its finest hour the jokes that a 50 year old are going to laugh at the same way a five would when Ernest has the pop in his hand and like he smashes his hand under the uh, garbage lid right mm -hmm. It's fleeting and scared stupid. It's only there two or three times. And it's, it's kind like, of, yeah. it's all over jail though. So is this it? Are we locking this? Yeah. If you've been watching this video series, just waiting for us to finally land on the best movie so you could know which one to watch, now is the time for you to finish up and finally watch Ernest Goes to Jail. That's our recommendation. <laughs> Right? I agree. Yeah. So, from the bottom up. Okay. At number 10, we have The Bottom of the Barrel with Ernest Goes to Africa. Number 9, The Underwhelming Ernest Rides Again. Number 8 is The Surprisingly Funny Ernest in the Army. Number 7 was Slam Dunk Ernest, which surprised us all. Number 6 is Ernest Goes to School. Number 5 is the pseudo-classic Ernest Saves Christmas. Number four is the underwatched cult classic in waiting, Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Number three is the first Ernest vehicle, Ernest Goes to Camp. Number two is the fan favorite, Ernest Scared Stupid, only bested by Ernest Goes to Jail at number one. That's it for <laughs> Ernest Roulette. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, there are other intellectual properties, not just included within Jim Varney's IMDb filmography, but there are other earnest properties. And should we ever get to them outside of the films, uh, I'm afraid you will be the first to know. There are more earnest tapes you could have bought. Yeah, not movies though, right? Just just like tapes, specials. There's, specials and such, yes. There's like the collection of his uh, of his commercials here. Win ten thousand dollars. <laughs> there Ernest was all over the place. I think these fifteen hours maybe account for seventy five percent of the Ernest material, right? This is insane. <laughs> but should we ever choose to return, it's there. It's there. I am glad that we made these videos because 
Ernest is not talked about regularly in the 21st century. I don't see him as memes. I don't see him as reaction videos or GIFs. I don't see him on Facebook except when we three put him there. <laughs> we had to create some GIFs. I, yeah. We, I mean, as far as like commercials go, I see people reference the Noid more often than Ernest. Yeah. yeah. I think that Ernest deserves to be remembered, and the best way to do that is to reflect back on him, and I'm very happy that this is what we did. The people who made the Ernest movies really put a lot of effort into them. Not always with the best results, but more often than not. And that passion showed, mm -hmm. I think, in these movies. Yeah. If you had to rewatch one of these right now, and it's not one of the top two. It's cool. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe it's because we just talked about it a bunch, and I kind of want to like go over it again. But yeah, school is kind of what I'm feeling. I'd watch school. Yeah. Okay. We're not actually going to go watch Ernest Goes to School. No, not for like a no. million years. No, I'm done with Ernest for like the next fucking decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been fun, it's been a pleasure, and until the next Guaranteed Video project, we will see you later. Know what I mean?